Hey guys, so we're going to have a look at Copilot in Office slash Microsoft 365. So we'll have a look in Outlook, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Um, we won't have time to look at OneNote today, uh, but it's available in OneNote as well. So if we start in emails, um, there's a couple of ways that you can use Copilot. So when you click on an email, you'll get something called Summary by Copilot. So if you don't want to read either a single email or a, a big long thread of emails, um, you can get Copilot to do a, a summary for you, which is which is good. Um, but you can also use it to draft emails as well. Now, I'm not a big fan of using AI to create emails, but there is a feature in it that is an email coach that I think is quite cool. So create a new email. Um, I will draft just this time, just so that I don't have to type the whole thing, but I can say, um, create me an update for my finance team on this month. All right, so quickly generate that for me. Um, and then once I've got it, I can highlight. I don't even think I need to highlight to be fair, but you can click on coaching by Copilot and it'll analyze your email and give you pointers on how to improve it. So that's quite nice. I think Grammarly um, and some of the other Chrome extensions to do with um, Writing coaching uh, provide a similar thing, um, but it's nice to have this provided by Copilot as well. So we've got some pointers there on tone, um, reader sentiment, and then clarity as well. But it's interesting that obviously it's picking part an email that it generated itself. But you know, there we go. So that's a quick overview of Copilot and Outlook. Um, so we'll move on to Word. So. Word is probably the best use case for Copilot at the moment, just because um, it uses GPT-4, which is a large language model. Um, I don't think it uses the advanced data analysis in the background, even if um, within Excel, don't quote me on that, um, but it's not the same as if you were to try and generate code in ChatGPT, for example. Um, but either way, what we can do is we can use it to help us draft, change, review documents and, and all that sort of stuff. So I can go into Copilot here. And I can say, um, act as a CFO and generate me a board pack for the end of the month. Please include figures, example figures. bit hit and miss sometimes it's super quick sometimes it's slower um, whilst it's doing that um, let me just take you through some of the other ah, interesting Let's try again it did it earlier Either way, whilst it's doing that, um, if you click on prompts here, um, we've got some example prompts. So you can go through and see some of the recommended suggestions there. Um, but there's also something called um, Copilot Lab, whereby um, there's even more examples that you can use um, for inspiration, subjected in um, grouped into categories. But you can go to the Copilot Lab, um, bring up this page, um, and again, you know, it's just a, a complete library of example prompts there that you can save, you can bookmark um, for easy access. So that's a nice touch. Um, but either way, we've got board pack, um, quite heavy on bullet points to be fair. Um, I should have probably updated the prompt to say use a combination of paragraphs, bullet points and tables, but um, we'll let it off this time. Um, Ideally, what I want to be able to do is convert all of this into a PowerPoint as well. Um, but we'll let it finish up. So if we then go into Excel, um, give a quick example of some of the stuff that you can do in Excel. So we'll click on Copilot. Um, always better if your data is formatted as a table, so it understands the base structure. So we can see the suggestions on the right here. Um, add formula columns, highlight and sort. Yeah, um, but analyze is also quite quite a nice one as well. 
So I don't know whether anyone's used Power BI, but Analyze has been available in Power BI for a while to try and help you spot that insight. Um, so we could start there, so we can click on Analyze. Um, and then it will give some um, suggested insights. Yeah. Now, again, you probably might want to prompt yourself rather than using the recommended suggestions because it doesn't understand the context. Um, but I can click on something like, are there any outliers in my data? Um, and it's got four outliers. don't know how it's calculated it, but um, field cells and cost of goods sold appear highly correlated with four outliers. Um, I don't know whether it will highlight those outliers. So can you highlight these outliers on the table? Okay, so I can only do that for columns and tables. Please try asking me to apply formatting in a column table and say, okay, fine. So it's it's not as advanced as you know you'd like it to be to be completely fluid in terms of user experience, but at least it's a nice starting point. Um, if I then click on add formula columns, again it'll come up with some suggestions. Add a column to compare profit and month number. I mean, I don't know how useful that is, but I'll just show an example of it generating the, the column suggestion. You can also use it to sort of merge merge columns as well. Um, so is it, is it called a contentate or something like that? Um, so you can do that anyway. So here's a suggestion, compares profit, each row to the month number returns profit is greater. Okay, that's a nice touch. Um, so dropping in the formula, so let's do insert column Profit is greater, profit is greater. Profit is less or equal. Okay, cool. Might be nice if we can have that as a as a chart. Uh, or not. Let's do um, something slightly different. Let's say, so um, can you show sales or gross sales over time? Show gross sales over time on a chart. We go. I'm going to add that to a new sheet, which is nice. So that's a super quick way of adding um, adding stuff there. Okay. Uh, average gross sales by date, the line chart. Cool. So you can keep going. You know, um, as I say, I'm just using some of the preset prompts that's coming up, which may not be great. So I think if you prompt yourself um, from what you know about the data, that's probably going to be a, a better route um, than just using the auto suggestions there. Um, so just a couple of examples on how to use Copilot in Excel. And then when we go into PowerPoint, um, we can create a presentation from scratch. I'm not going to not going to do that today, um, but we might want to then say add a slide about, and then it's doing the first first um, step of that process for us. Um, you can ask questions about the slide deck, you know, so ask a question about the deck. Um, what is the difference between strategic, okay, what's the difference between strategic and operational objectives? So this could be if the presentation has been sent to you, for example, and you want a bit of uh, analysis. So as well as doing some analysis and some summaries of presentations you might have been sent, you can also create a presentation from scratch. So if I do create a presentation outline to support my board pack, acting as a CFO, focusing on key figures and trends. There we go. So I guess it's nice um, that it's added a bit of flair, which is good. Um, yeah, I guess you might not want the images. You might just want to take some of the themes and some of the ideas and switch things around. Um, but of course, you can switch the theme. You know, do all of that sort of stuff that you need to, need to do. I could be more explicit. You know, so we could say add slide about. Um, so we've got profitability, cash flow. Uh, maybe 
capex plans. See how it updates. I know we're whizzing through quickly, so still the case that the better the quality of the the prompt, um, the better output you're going to get. Um, but you know, just goes to show that you can flex, tweak, add in, restructure all of that sort of stuff using Copilot as well. Um, and then if I click organize the presentation, I guess it's using its own intelligence to reshuffle, um, tweak, maybe improve it. There you go. So it's yeah, it's added categories. Yeah, so that's that's quite nice. Um, so instead of just being slide after slide, we've got some themes and we've got some, um, I guess, category slides for different sections of the presentation as well. Cool, so there we go. Um, we've had a bit of a look. So we had a look at emails, email summaries, um, had a look at generating text um, within Word, some financial analysis in Excel as well as creating some columns with some calculated formulas that it's automatically done for us. A bit of analysis on a slide deck that we've already got. Creating a new presentation from scratch. The only thing that I've not been able to do, and I think this is probably a limitation of the fact that I'm using a Copilot Pro with a personal edition of Office instead of a business edition of Office, is I, I can't say create a presentation from this Word document. Yeah, or create a Word document from this presentation to convert those documents into different formats. I think it's probably because the personal editions of Microsoft 365 probably don't have that fabric layer, the fabric data layer that ties everything together. Um, I don't think it will take documents from OneDrive. I think it needs that fabric working in the background. I don't know for a fact, but if you look at some of the help documentation on creating a new presentation, you'll see one of the prompts here is create a presentation from a file. I don't have that option within my Copilot. If you are using the business edition, I guess the idea is you can select a file from an other area of SharePoint or anything that sits within that fabric layer. So hopefully this has been useful. Give us your feedback, come back with your questions, and we'll catch up soon.